Now let's move on to the fundamental law of active management. What does the fundamental law of active management basically mean? It says that it, if we take an, in, an investor's information ratio. Now, when we talk about the information ratio, there are different ways in the curriculum that they show you how to come up with or calculate the information ratio. When we're talking about the information ratio with regard to the fundamental law of active management, there are two components that are used to calculate the information ratio for an investor or if you will, for a portfolio manager. Those two components are the information coefficient, and the other component is the investor breadth. And I'll talk about each of these components in a second, but let's get the formula down, okay? So if you're looking at your screen right now, I'm just putting this down. One way to calculate the information ratio, and again, this is an approximation, so it doesn't show as being equal, it's approximately equal to. So the information ratio is gonna be made up of two components, the information coefficient for our investor or portfolio manager, and then we're gonna multiply that by the square root of the investor breadth. Okay. Those are the two components, and again, you should re recognize this as one of the ways to calculate the investor's information ratio. What is the information coefficient, and what is the investor breadth? The information coefficient is supposed to actually track how good is our portfolio manager, or if you will, our investor, at making stock selections. In other words, are they very good? Do, do they have a good skill? Do they have a good knowledge of the stocks that they're choosing? Well, if we wanted to get an understanding about their depth of knowledge of a particular security or securities, how would we be able to ascertain that? One way that we could do that is we could actually regress the portfolio manager or the investors, but let's talk about the portfolio manager here. If we could regress the portfolio manager's forecasted outcomes, against the actual outcomes. In other words, he forecasted how he expected particular securities to do, and then let's take a look at what actually happened to those securities and see whether or not the outcomes, the returns, if you will, of the forecast and the returns of the actual outcomes are one and the same or very close. Obviously, the closer the actual outcomes are to the forecasted outcomes, we would say that that portfolio manager has a high knowledge, a high level of skill in selecting securities, so he would have a high information coefficient. Then we would take that information coefficient and multiply it by the square root, not uh, the square root of the investor breadth. What is the investor breadth? The investor breadth is the number of pure independent investment decisions that the portfolio manager makes. Notice my language, pure, if you will, pure investment decisions that the, uh, that the investor or the portfolio manager makes. So for example, if our portfolio manager selects I don't know, 15 utility stocks for the portfolio, that is not considered to be 15 independent decisions. That's actually considered to be one independent decision because it's all based on the same thing, utility stocks. And he's, he or she is probably using the same information for those utility stocks. So that would be considered one decision. What we want to do is capture the number of independent decisions. So if our portfolio manager were to buy or advise one utility stock, one semiconductor stock, one pharmaceutical stock, one, uh, if you will, automobile stock, those would all be independent investment decisions and the investor breadth would increase, okay? Because each of those decisions would be based on different sources of information. So that's what you need to know. And therefore we take the square root of the in investor breadth, we multiply that by the information coefficient and that gives us the information ratio based on the fundamental law of active management. All right, and again, when we talk about the information coefficient, to recap, it, the information coefficient in this equation that you see is gonna be measured by, again, comparing the investors or the portfolio manager's forecast against the actual outcomes, and we can do that through regression. And again, as I said, the closer they are, the forecasted outcomes and the actual outcomes, the greater the portfolio manager or the investor's information coefficient. Obviously, skillful managers are gonna have very high, if you will, information coefficients whereas the investor breadth is the number of independent decisions that the investor makes, okay? Unfortunately, you should always keep in mind that it's gonna be hard for most portfolio managers or for most investors to actually experience a high information coefficient, okay? All right, so that is what I would know about one of the ways of calculating the information ratio.